Well, joining me now, Christian uh, Whiten, a senior fellow at the Center for the National Interest, former State Department senior advisor in both the Trump and George W. Bush administrations. Uh, Christian, good to have you with us. Uh, let's start with, first of all, the sanctions against Venezuela. And is it, uh, and how important is that uh, in the effort uh, to be sure that the Venezuelan people uh, have a new opportunity at running their country? I think it is important, Lou. It's just another sign the news is tightening around Maduro, the person we now refer to as the former president of Venezuela. Uh, really, that country, that economy has been ravaged so badly by two decades of socialism now that really all it has left in, in generating hard capital is its export of oil. And by sanctioning that oil monopoly, that state oil monopoly, it's intended to preserve that wealth for the future and incoming, hopefully incoming government. Um, and it's just another sign, I think, that, that the tide is turning against them. Uh, that incoming government will be led by Juan uh, Guaido, uh, who, is, uh, who has been recognized by the United States and the Trump White House uh, as the interim president. Uh, what is it going to take here, uh, and how long do you think it's going to take for him to uh, establish a, a government uh, once, once Maduro is uh, driven from Caracas? Well, that should move quickly once Maduro is gone. The question is, when does he go? And it really comes down to when the police and the military no longer support Maduro. There are already some pretty good signs in the fact that, that Maduro has been unable to suppress Guaido and his, his um, colleagues they are, and these protests in the streets. The fact that this people power, this, this show of, of force by the actual people of Venezuela has persisted and seems to be gaining strength uh, and that the, 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 the outgoing government is unable to bring it under control are good signs that the old regime is eroding. What do you make of this note, uh, the, the number 5,000 uh, and troops uh, for Colombia uh, uh, ac accidentally, uh, well, written purposefully by John Bolton on his pad and then captured purposefully by the press who saw it? Yeah, we all we all love John and his legal pads. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer. Um, we're not going to invade Venezuela with 5,000 troops. Even just invading little old Panama in 1991 took about 27,000 U.S. troops. My guess, and this is purely a guess, is that this could be a discussion about prepositioning U.S. Mm -hmm. forces for an emergency in Venezuela to protect the U.S. embassy and U.S. citizens if things really do go sideways. And that might be an appropriate level for us to do that with. Colombia would make sense as an ally. A place where we have a lot of cooperation, both police and military, as, as far as drug interdiction and other security cooperation goes. You could also have assets, of course, uh, at sea, but um, that's my guess uh, of the meaning of that. And the announcement that uh, Robert Lighthizer, the trade representative, will be leading uh, the trade talks uh, with the uh, Chinese delegation beginning Wednesday, uh, and, uh, and importantly, Peter Navarro, uh, one of the, uh, the president's uh, toughest trade uh, negotiators and analysts. Uh, you're, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think that's, these are great signs. I think a lot of people have mistakenly priced in a deal with China, thinking we're going to get to yes. And I think Trump would like to get the yet to yes for the sake of our economy and the stock market. But I think he really wants long-term change and will not just take a poor deal uh, to get any deal. The Chinese have offered up reportedly sort of big purchases of U.S. exports, more than they have in the past, but not any sort of believable promise of systemic change that we need, a change in their kleptocratic. Yeah. Ways And also, there's, I think, a strong feeling in the White House that regardless of what promises they make, we need to wait and see them fulfill yeah. that. We can't take their word anymore. Yeah. So I think Trump, that, you know, it's, it's really a coin toss of whether there's going to be a deal. Vis-a-vis -vis China, uh, it is not trust but verify. It is verify, 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 I think is, you would agree. Uh, and, yes. uh, and, and, and frankly... I, you get into a negotiation where you're negotiating whether or not someone, another nation, can steal from you, which is really the effect here. Uh, you talked about kleptocracy, and others talk about forced transfer. It's stealing, and it's straightforwardly that. Uh, some of our most important technology and secrets, uh, and it's hundreds of billions of dollars every year. Uh, so that negotiation has to go one way. Would you not agree? 
Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And I, I really, you know, one of the great things about Venezuela, if it flips from socialism to capitalism, that will complete a number of transformations in South America. And maybe that's the growth market our investors and companies should be looking at instead of this mirage of China where the growth is never there and you get robbed blind of your technology and IP. Well said, Christian Whiten, as always. Good to have you with us. Thanks.